Hey, the best squad. It's your girl, Ebony, the best, guys. Before I get started, let me start by saying everything I'm about to say, it's alleged, all in my opinion, and it's all for entertainment purposes. Um, don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe button, and I will definitely meet you in the comment section or in the next video. All right, guys. So I want to talk to you today. Um, as y'all know, probably already know, because we Bellamitas, right? Um, Melody went live today, and basically on her live, she was just talking about, um, you know, what she had planned skincare you know order promotion she even had a millimeter up um and they were having a great conversation she was so excited to be up um also she was talking about tank um jumping up out of his sleep and scaring sugar mama um you know because i guess he jumped up so suddenly also was talking about um the and i gotta learn to stop stay um why do i always say um all right, I'm going to try not to say um no more. Uh, <laughs> she was talking about um, Sugar Mama, the apple juice, you know, she, how she still gets up, warm it, give it to her. Now, guys, what I saw was interesting because, you know, I stay living on Mel's um, story. I saw this cute little picture. It's our girl, Melody, on the cover of Essence magazine. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah. She, wait, I can never read this. Cha, ah, uh, I see y'all making the cover. Then there was another cover of her. And I guess it's Essence 50th Defining Culture. And um, she was on that cover looking flawless. Okay, she was looking flawless. We also, well, I, not we, but me, I also saw Kimmy. Kimmy was on the cover of it also, looking beautiful also. Um, Jesus, peace. Here goes the arm um again. I did not see Letitia. I didn't see Letitia on the cover, but I definitely saw one with Kimmy. Maybe hers is coming out later. But it was nice to see these ladies um, gracing the cover of Essence magazine. Listen, I used to love Essence. I used to love Essence magazine. You couldn't stop getting enough of Essence magazine. And there was another one too that always comes with Essence. Another black magazine and you pay the local fee to get the um get the subscription. Now y'all think it was just a um error that we don't see Letitia on the cover? Because I know Mel. She posts a picture of her and the question on her picture was who does she think she is? And the answer was pressure. And then she went on to say, you know, about her blessings and all these other stuff. So y'all know <laughs> the hate is on high. All right. <clears throat> anyway, guys, Melody did an interview with um Post Cat. What's her name? Was with um her name also was Melody Nicole. So <coughs> no, her name was Shari Nicole. See, Melody Shari and Shari Nicole. Um, and it was a very interesting interview. Um, Mel was asked, um, you know, like what gave her her strength um, to go through, you know, this. She said it, it's always been her mom. Um, who does she like really, you know, get, you know, like encouragement from? She mentioned that it was her um her team, Dawn Michelle, and all her team just being there for her. Um, <clears throat> she didn't mention anything about her relationships. So I don't know if that's still going on, but I didn't hear anything about that. Um, she was also asked about the the M M kids and how does she keep them away from social media? And she was talking about, um, <clears throat> you know, even though they're growing up, she doesn't allow them to be on social media. And she was just really admired by Mariah, who's 11 years old. She said, you know, she only has one computer in the house and, you know, they're not allowed to go on it. But she did saw her still playing with her dolly. So <clears throat> that gave her a smile. She was also asked about, you know, her being, you know, the producer or behind the scenes. And would she ever, 
if she had to do it again, would she come on the screen or would she just stay behind? And she said, you know, I have no problem. But Mel always said that, you know, she she didn't mind. But she said also that we don't even know the half of what she does behind the screen. Um, another question Shari asked her was, you know, how does she divorce? How, do, how does she view marriage now that she went through this and all of that? Melody did say that, you know, as she always said, she loved marriage. She admired marriages, but going through a divorce is like a death, you know, because it doesn't just only affect the people. It affects the children and everybody else that, you know, is around them. And she is not lying. We see how it affect them. I'm going to play the clip um, so you can hear her answer these questions. Also, Martel, nobody cares. Stop telling us to leave you alone because we're not going to leave you alone. You're the disgusting piece of trash and we have nothing to do with you. You think that you going into hiding and you just lost one more, 1,000 more subscriber. Belinda me here, stop not following you anymore. You see, what monkey do, monkey, monkey see, monkey do. So, destiny now follow you. Martel now follow you. So she decide. Okay, I'm in a business about them. But guys, anyway, listen to what Mel had to say. Go ahead, hit that like, comment, subscribe button. And I will talk to you in the comment section or in my next video. And you know, people have been telling me too that, you know, them like my little Jamaican accent, you know. Them like when me talk, my accent. So I'm just going to like, you know, sometimes they come in and out. So I have to be careful, you know, and try to make sure, say, you know, me speak where, you know. It's broken English, so it's not, not anything. But Anyway, so broken English, proper English, all of that English. Glad you guys like the both of them. Keep being myself through this whole thing, and I'll talk to y'all later. All right? With, with that in mind, how do you now view marriage, and how do you now view divorce? Absolutely. So, it's going to be good. I still think marriage is beautiful. Let me say that. I still think marriage is beautiful. Um, and I've said that. You know, the divorce and everything. I've said that multiple times. Marriage is still very beautiful with the right person, right? Um, so, unfortunately, <laughs> um, my situation didn't cause me to just get this, you know, sour feeling pertaining to marriage. Um, do I want to get married again? Mm, if it happens, it happens, but it's not a must. I've done it, right? I've had this brand love, you know, where I had you know, got married 22, had children and had a successful flourishing business and all of that in the marriage. So I've had that grand love experience. So getting married again is not at the top of my priorities. Um, divorce, how I view divorce, um, it's one of those things, it's like a death. It really is. And I know we hear people say that all the time, but it really is because when you think about death, right, when someone passes away, it doesn't just affect the um, the direct uh, family members. It affects friends. It affects everybody, right? And so I've literally witnessed this divorce affect everybody. Um, everybody. Um, and I feel like everybody who was close to us or who are close to us have had their pieces of mourning when it comes to seeing that our marriage is really dissolved. It's really done, right? Because so many people look to us as, you know, kind of like, oh, that that's goals. That's marriage goals, right? Um, and so a lot of people have been, you know, have been saddened by the divorce. Um, so th divorce really is like a death. It is. One thing that's not dying is, is your bag, okay? <laughs> it's your <laughs> way. Because let me tell y'all something. It's, uh, Melody, hey, Melody Sheree ain't skipped a beat. Um, as far as entrepreneurship is concerned, you, you're just a powerhouse. And, you know, what has been the key, like the formula for you to to just continue to leave an amazing financial footprint, not only for yourself, but for your for your children as well? Because I know general, generational wealth is important to you, too. It sure is. Um, so one of the main things is, um, for me, has always been to work in what I'm passionate about and do what I'm passionate about. You know, they say if you do what you love, what is it's like if you do what you love, you it's never a day of work, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and so doing things that I love, that I genuinely love, that I'm genuinely passionate about, not just throwing things out there to see what sticks, yeah. but actually doing what I enjoy. Like, I could pack my skincare orders all day long. I love skincare, you know? Um, and so teaching. My degree is in education. I've created over 700 entrepreneurs in the past three years, um, teaching them by way of Zoom all over the country. I have students all over the country, you know, who've been in my master class. Like, I I love teaching. I have a passion for teaching. Even though I left the classroom after three and a half years to focus on my entrepreneurial goals, I still love teaching. So everything that I'm doing, it, they're all things that I enjoy. They're all things that I'm passionate about. So that makes it easy. Mm, I, I want to speak to the to the teaching piece because you kind of 
bitches. Yeah, I, I, put, I, I built uh, 700 entrepreneurs and I talked to them. I'm like, wait a minute. That's huge. That's millions and millions and millions of dollars that you've helped sow seeds into the ground and have reaped, helped people reap for themselves and their families. Absolutely. What level of satisfaction do you get from teaching that maybe producing or even your skincare line doesn't give you? Um, I think that for me, um, being able to, because most of my students haven't really heard of property preservation. And so a lot of them come in and they're, most of them are black women. And so they come in and they're, they know they're getting into property and maybe a little bit of construction. So there's kind of a fear there at first, right? I get, um, I love gaining the feeling of knowing I remember that fear from them mm. while instilling the fact that you can do anything and you got this and I'm holding your hand through this. Yeah. Is there anybody that taught you um, a lesson that you're still passing on to your students? I would say because um, I get so many oh, I have so, I've had so many people pour some wonderful things into me. Um, one thing that I would say is that um, an old friend used to say all the time is let God be God. Right? Let God be God. And so for my students, you know, whether or not a subcontractor works out for them and they recruited and they're, you know, feeling down like, okay, what am I going to do? Or maybe there was a particular contract they wanted to get and they didn't get that one. They got another one. It's let God be God. Divine timing is perfect timing. And um, that's one of the biggest lessons that I will say, too, that I've learned. Divine timing is perfect timing. You don't have to force nothing. You ain't got to go out of your way. When I tell you stuff will fall right in your lap, when it's meant and it's in the divine timing, it will fall right in your lap. As a black woman watching you, there's a level of, like, empowerment that I that I get. Again, just watching you move through the ebbs and flows of, of the industry and all that you've shown us about your personal life. Keeping that in mind, is there one thing you really, or maybe more, that you want black women to take away from just watching your journey, not only on television, but in entrepreneurship as well? Absolutely. Let me tell y'all this, black women. Since you said, that's what you said. You said the black women. That's what I said. That's what you, that's what you said, Sheree. Um, let me tell you something. We literally possess, whether you know it or not, you possess a strength that is so unstoppable that it puts fear in other people. Mm. It's there. You got to tap into it. You got to tap into it daily. You have to reaffirm yourself daily, reassure yourself daily, but I promise you it's there. And whenever you start moving and operating in that strength, when you understand, I like to say, when you enter a room, you don't get you don't get fear for it. The demons flee. You Come on now. When you enter the room, the demons flee. That's the kind of strength and power that we have. Um, and so, but we have to tap into it because society and history has beaten us down so much and tried to show us something so different that we're weak. Tapping into that strength is really where the power is. Now I'm on stage with credits, I sing yeah, Jimmy.